Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ugo Iduma and in today's video, we'll be talking about IMSIS, everything about IMSIS, everything about being an Erasmus student and I'll be talking with Jennifer Confidence. She is a Nigerian Erasmus student as I am. We're studying IMSIS, we're in the IMSIS program together. Um, the only difference is she has a scholarship and I don't have a scholarship and I thought that it would be um, a balance of um, opinions on it. I'm not really the best at answering that question just because I don't have a scholarship and she does. So if it's something you really want to know about, do listen. And some of you to message me too, because most Africans that message me want to come in and they want to like know how it is and all that. So I thought that um, just because I have like a pre-pandemic experience and she has a pandemic experience, it would be a good balance um, of opinions and something you people could really, really um, benefit from. So to every student watching this, I'm aware that you're either, you know, thinking of a scholarship or you've applied to university, but you're actually also to actively thinking of going into the university, whether it's for a master's program or an undergraduate study. And, you know, Amber Student was kind enough to sponsor today's video. And I want to say a very big thank you to Amber Student. So Amber Student is a private student um, provider. They provide premium, premium, premium student accommodations to students all over the world in Europe, in north america in um also to south asia just in case you're looking for a room and a space that you feel you know that's safe in affordable and where you kind of as an international student i'm um, specifically like directed to international student, as an international student maybe it's your first time abroad abroad and you specifically don't really know what to do and you know how to get about the city that you're in our student does offer hands-on services to like help you you know figure out you know how to move around how to maybe tour a city and you know how to really put plant your feet in your new city so i do love that about amber student i also to love the fact that amber student is also to very close to um the universities that you are applying to like like 10 to 20 minutes away from your university so it's it makes it very easy to kind of like adapt you don't have to like keep learning about the train systems or the bus system stuff like that because they're like very very close to your university so they're like within walking distance and even if you have to take a train you don't have like many stops you get so that's also to one of the things that i love about amber students so just in case you're interested in getting you know a space that is clean that's affordable that's also to safe that's you know nice because i only do nice if you're interested in those kind of services, do check out the link in my description. You're offered a $20 discount. So thank you so much to Ambas. And this is Jennifer Confidence. Introduce yourself. We have had a long conversation up here, but <laughs> introduce yourself. I know, right? Um, I think I didn't actually know to start. I didn't actually know that you didn't have the scholarship. I think this is the first time I'm actually knowing. <laughs> I did I, apply. I did apply, but I was rejected. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't actually know. I'm just getting to know. Okay, so um, my name is Jennifer Confidence. Um, what else? I have a background in international relations and strategic studies from Nigeria, River State, Portacourt Girl. Um, yeah, I like saying photocots because it gives me a lot of joy anytime I see photocot. And um, I think that's um, basically about me. I have a YouTube channel too, Jennifer. Yes, subscribe to my channel. Yeah, if you <laughs> are to yeah subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like, if you want to have like more in depth like knowledge about like the whole MCS process, like the scholarship process, she's actually like your best bet because. Um, you also took like in a WhatsApp group with other Erasmus students. So you kind of draw from their own experiences and like the value you actually give is so good. And some sometimes when I used to watch your YouTube channel, I'm like, God damn it, I wish I had this YouTube channel. Like when I was applying, like they might not have rejected me, they would have considered me at least. At least they would have considered me because um what you do say is like very, very important. And then it's not just if you're looking for like um an Erasmus scholarship or an MC scholarship, is I feel like the value you give is for scholarships overall. Like if you really want to like land a good scholarship, we will be talking about that. So if you're really, really interested, stay tuned. We have a question. And the first question is like, what inspired you to study IMSIS? Well, I think I have always wanted to, you know, have a 
get to study a course that merges security, peace, intelligence, diplomacy, mm -hmm. more like a meeting point for these um, different aspects of international relations. And while checking for scholarships, the Erasmus Mundus scholarship, this was the only one that gave me that meeting point. Aside this one, I think there's another course that um, um, Glasgow offers. I think it's international law in uh, security, security and peace and development, something like that. But it's another Erasmus course that Glasgow offers. But as at last year, they were not off. Um, it was not up for scholarship, so I think they just resumed. And the next one that came close to read again is um, African Studies, one other Erasmus course. So this was just the best bet for me, and this was the only one I decided to apply for. I'm like, you know what? Let me just apply for this one, and yeah. So how do you exactly get um, the Erasmus scholarship? I can't tell you exactly how I got it because... Okay, like <laughs> for somebody wanting to apply, what exactly do you need on your application that would either land you the scholarship or at least be like of high consideration for a scholarship? Yeah, I think I, I had a high conviction that I was going to get a scholarship or at least I would be competing with those people that would be considered for the scholarship for a good mm. number of reasons. I checked out um, what Erasmus, what the program was requiring, you know, for your um, your background, how it's, it relates to IMSIS. I think you have about, is it 30% or 50% mark? And then they check your SOP. There are scores are located to them. Like really? The SOP, yeah. What's SOP? Statement of purpose. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, statement of purpose. So that's <laughs> like that's like the short um, you know, yeah. the short form we call it like the Erasmus group, we just call it SOP and all mm -hmm. that. So there were scores are located to read. Usually there are yeah, for every Erasmus program, you would see the they usually allocate scores to read. They might be like, okay, maybe your um your undergraduate program would can be like 30% or 50%. Your SOP can be like 20%, your reference later can be like 10% or 15%. And you know, they just grade it. So you're going to see the list there. I think if you check the IMSIS website, it's there. So I looked at it, wrote every single thing down, and then I started ticking it one after the other so I knew that okay for my undergrad at least I have like 30 percent that was the full mark because I studied international relations so I'm good to go 30 marks and then I looked at my SOP I think SOP was another 30 marks I'm like okay I have to learn to write SOP and mm -hmm. so I started searching for you know videos and articles and a whole lot of things on the internet but I saw a lot on Commonwealth I saw a lot on Chevney but there was not enough on, in fact, there was, I didn't find anything on Erasmus. Yeah. I didn't find anything. Yeah, and so I'm like, um, there's this gap. So I, I had to, um, you know, merge the knowledge that I had from applying for Commonwealth, applying for Chevney, and um, my uncle reviewing my Chevney um, SOP or rather essays. And so I had to merge that knowledge and look at what Erasmus was all about. So Erasmus is not just about the education. Erasmus is about the mobility. Mm -hmm. So the mobility, the intercultural exchange and all that. So I got the knowledge I, I had with, you know, writing the Commonwealth and Chevney and other scholarships, the, the knowledge of writing their essays and SOPs. And then I merged it with the purpose of Erasmus and then in particular what IMSIS was all about. So I had to, there's this measure of, you know, writing it, what was it all about? And so what I did was I wrote down what um, Erasmus was targeted at, what IMSIS was set out to do. And then I had to write my, you know, essay in such a way that it suits the overall goal of Erasmus and the particular mm -hmm. goal of IMSI. So I'm not just writing. So that's why sometimes I tell people, I'm like, um, writing an SOP is an art. Mm -hmm. It's not like regular academic distance. It's like you're trying to give the reader what the reader wants to see. Mm -hmm. So you're not just writing. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, I have a background in international relations, but you need to be more specific. I studied these particular courses that, you know, IMSIS would be teaching mm -hmm. you. So I had to point out those courses and some other things that, you know, talked about my experience in working 
as a research assistant and uh, you know an organization a peace organization and I I just sat down and put my knowledge together and as I then I had nobody to supervise me I was like yeah one more do, you, do you think like overall your experience like in like now that you're like a student now do you think it's like your your work experience because people do think oh you need to have like a, a level of work experience to be considered for the mc scholarship do you think it's your work experience that might have you know be that be that one thing that um gave you an edge not just i think work experience was like 10 percent mm-hmm. so I don't think it's so, it's just the work experience. I think work experience and you know leadership and all that were just like 10% or so. I'm not sure um, the points are located to it, but I mm. think um work experience, it does not just have to be your work experience, but you know, leadership skills and they just want to see you you have something to offer and most yeah. likely let it be in relation to the course and stuff like that. Why I'm smiling is because I think you wrote your you you applied by yourself. You wrote yours by yourself. But hey, I did my through like an agency. So he's the one that like applied for me and all that. And I knew not not that I solidly knew, but I know that um, Glasgow is of high competition. You know, like um, like over a thousand people apply for like IMSIS and like. You see the number of people in the class is actually a few numbers, so that that tells you that a lot of people were really rejected. So like, I had like a seventy percent like assurance that I would be at least I like I'll get the admission just because I knew I didn't have like a lot of work experience, but then I knew I had gathered like skills over the years. I wasn't just like I wasn't just sitting down. Like I know I don't have work experience. But, like I went for like trainings, conferences, like. And I was gaining like a whole wealth of knowledge, but it wasn't like random wealth of knowledge because I know that when we're doing NYC, people are just doing certification in health security. You know, like you study political science, what are you doing there? Learning construction work, but I was I was learning, yeah, I was learning things that was that was specific to the course because I heard about I like I've known about MCs since 2015, wow. like. Wow. That was when I sent my dad an email and I told my daddy, I am going to this university. Like, I will be here, sent in the brochure and all. So, like, this university has always been, like, at the back of my mind. Like, as I was working towards my grades and towards everything, I was working towards coming here. Like, every effort I put was towards coming here. But I thought because somebody wrote my application for me, the person couldn't represent me like I would have res- represented me. And I felt to just, I think, because I had like a whole lot I was doing. Like, so I just was like, you're a professional at it. Take, do it, write it, submit it for me even. But I felt like that wasn't even an, a good approach to go because I felt if I had at least had a glance at it, I would have put in some imputes into it that would have made me of consideration because I feel like in as much as people like not people ask me now like in as much as people write applications i feel like you should also to make yourself likable in the in the letters i don't know how to explain it but like in as much as you want to sound formal you should actually give them a little informal taste of who you are what you like about the class about the course and what you would bring to the class discussion and i think I think the guy just looking at my CV, hearing me talk, he could he could write about who I am, but he couldn't write about what I bring to the class, what I would bring to IMSIS that would have brought me like highly considered for a scholarship. And I think that was where maybe I made a mistake and because I didn't even look at it. Because in my head, I'm just like, see, I'm doubling two classes right now. Like, do you, bro, you say you've got some people's scholarships, get me one. So like looking back at it now, like I should have actually like had a glance at it, put in like like a touch of Ugo because I'm very likable. Like I feel like I'm so likable. So <laughs> I, I felt like if I was like if a little bit of me was in it, you couldn't resist me. And the thing about this instance people is like they really read that letter. Like it's not like machine read it. Yeah. They read it. Because yeah. so that's anybody talking to you, you don't be like, no oh, wow, you know me. <laughs> you but know then me? It was- you, you really need to put out yourself there because there were certain questions that we asked 
And so it's important you attend to those questions. If you look at the application form, there were certain questions and there was a way it was asked. So you need to be able to point out what you're bringing to the table. As you just said this, and I remember the question they asked. They were like, I think one of the questions is, um, what would you be contributing to IMSIS? And I think that's one of the hardest questions to answer as a And person. I think people are... Uh, like, yeah, people feel pressured to, to even make it sound smart, make it sound as if you're sophisticated with the English. But I feel like it's just like that, that question requires you to bring out yourself to answer yeah, that yeah. question. Like, Yeah. So your ability to always, I think one thing about um, scholarships is it's not just you're coming to take, take, take. Mm. You are also coming to give back. What are you bringing to the, what are you bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. Because aside that, um, maybe you might contribute in class and all the, but the general IMSIS body outside the class, outside the um, the IMSIS um, lectures and all that, what do mm -hmm. you bring to the general body? Mm -hmm. It's also something you, you might need to consider in writing your application. I think I consider those aspects, what I'm bringing to the table as an individual, mm -hmm. not just um, the classes and all that, because I feel Erasmus is beyond the, um, academic aspect of it. There's an academic aspect of it, and then there is the social aspect of it, and that's why yeah. the more and all. So it's important you're able to merge them. Yeah, but I, you know, there's some people like some people actually like meet me, and then you can obviously you you can hear like in their tone they don't feel like they would bring something like to the MC stuff because it's like I'm coming to learn, Jerry. Like, what are you talking about? Like, why is this to me? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I. <laughs> That's how the, that's that's how it's ringing in the back of our heads that we don't know. Yeah. Sure, like you get like so like I feel like if you if you're like talking to like somebody like what do you think they can will will, will you consider that they will bring to a table or something like that? I think everybody has something to bring to the table. It's just that some people don't realize what they're bringing to the table. You mm -hmm. can be bringing a lot. But you might not see yourself fitting into bringing something. You don't really know what you're bringing, but you're capable of bringing a lot. So I talked about, I know in my um, SOP, I talked about <clears throat> I had skills with organization. And then I saw that being useful in, you know, events they would organize or any other general MCs and Erasmus. Mm. Now, while I am... Um, I wrote that in my SOP. And at the moment, I am volunteering with Erasmus Nigeria. We're running the page and the page is mad. Mm -hmm. Like we have, we have like over close to 15 messages every day, if not more than that. Do you know, I never but, knew um, about this Erasmus Nigeria stuff until like you commented on like my page, like on my one Instagram, one, one of my, what do you call it? One of my YouTube videos. I'm like, there's only Nigerian Erasmus and I'm looking yeah. for friends. Yeah, you yeah. know, like I didn't even know it existed until I got the scholarship and then I was asked to bring um what they call it um certificate of residency. And then you know, in Nigeria, we don't really I, I was not sure what certificate of residency was. So I had to go and ask. I was searching and then I found the page and then I asked and then they told me, okay, this is it. And so I talked about, you know, organization and blah, 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 and all that in my SOP. And now I'm utilizing that. I'm volunteering with um, Erasmus Nigeria. We're running the page and it's mad. Like, if you see the number of messages. So you can get it on Instagram. Me. Like, they're on Instagram. They're not in, we're not on Instagram. It's just Facebook, Facebook at the moment, yeah. So Facebook, so guys, Nigerian Erasmus, check it out. Erasmus check Modus out. Nigeria on Facebook. Erasmus Modus Nigeria. Okay. Yeah, so we'll have a good number of people. And what we do is we dish out informations every day because a lot of people are sometimes confused. You know, yeah. it's not like you're applying for Commonwealth or Chevney, which yeah, most Nigerians true. are used to. So the Erasmus is quite different. And so we dish, like, we release information and a whole lot of that. And we help people, you know, your mobility, living in Nigeria, we give them a whole lot of information. We put um, our deeds from Nigeria together. Mm. We try to coordinate them and ensure that they arrive here safely and all that. At the moment, I think we are almost, uh, if not, we have not crossed um, 100 awardees for this year. The last time I checked, which was uh, two days ago, or, or, no, yesterday rather, we had 98 awardees already from Nigeria. There's always like like in the Eras, like in the IMSIS stuff, 
I don't know, there's always one Nigerian there with like an air, like with the scholarship and stuff like that. Because like my own says, like there's what's his name? He's like he got a scholarship and then there's you for like this year. And I, I'm looking forward to who for next year. But... Yeah, we have someone from next year. She's from Afe. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm always i'm always slightly excited for the scholarship for like from nigeria though like yeah i think the way i'm excited and like people also assume i too have a scholarship do you know the thing we have a funny story myself and the girl who got the scholarship for next year uh, no this year rather um teju uh, we have a funny story because she has been messaging me oh in season and she applied like deadline and there was a whole lot of things so we we're working together and all that, you know, she'll ask me a whole lot of questions and, you know, review SOPs and all that, what you should write. You know, sometimes you have what to write, but you need to learn how to put your words. Yeah. And then I keep telling, use Grammarly, I use this, use that and all that. And we made that application together and, you know, after everything, high experience and all that. Of course, she's working in a place that is well related, like, well, mm. I mean, well related to it from Nigeria, mm. federal government stuff and all that. So I was like... You're, you're good to go and she got it yeah but you know uh, the funny thing is i i feel like some people actually don't have like some people like maybe you do political science um, computer science or because i have classmates from like different field of study like different field of like computer science data like law like they are from everywhere but then i think the part that makes you get that scholarship because they did something totally different. The part that actually now makes them get that scholarship is the ability to then tell them what that knowledge they have from their former background will bring to IMSIS. Yeah, that's but, because they're giving you scholarship now. It's not just you it's an taking, investment. taking, taking. Yeah. So they want to be able to see that why they're investing this in you, you are equally bringing, you're going to be bringing something to the table. They see... Um, a future with um, Erasmus, a future with the IMSIS field in mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. So it's like you're able to showcase that, indeed, I'm going to do this thing. So a lot of people might be able to, you know, tell that story, okay, I will do this, I will do but there's something they're able to see through your, your SOP that, yes, this person would be able to do this. Our investment is secure in this person and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So they want to see not just for the now, like, okay, what are you are bringing to the table? Not just for the now, but also in the future. Mm-hmm. So overall, don't get me writing your SOP and you're there begging them for the scholarship. Don't say my family will bless you. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. that. <laughs> do not do that. Please, do not do that. Okay. So, so far, uh, I wanted to also to ask, because you have a scholarship, uh, do you feel like you have a pressure to perform, like to do well because you are indeed MCC's investment? Like they see the future of security in you. You are their future. Is there a pressure to like perform? Anybody does. If your parents invest money in you, they expect the best from you. Yeah. So even you on your own, you feel that pressure to perform. But then yours but- is like, your school fees is for free, so that pressure should That's be the thing. that pressure should go away. No, rather, rather, I don't feel that way. I think somebody said um, this thing. Um, my Ghanaian classmate said this thing. You know, he was like, "Well, I'm paying for my school fees, so you know, I have to read, I have to yeah. do this, I have to do that." And in my head, I'm like, "I think I feel more pressured than you are because." I feel like the um, the EU is investing so much in me, and so I need to show myself. Like I need to show that I am worthy. I need to do this. I need to do that. But I think um, what I have learned to do um, after the first semester is to say, you know what? While I'm feeling the pressure to perform academically, I think I need to. I need to, I don't need to necessarily dilute it, but I need to feel the pressure to acquire practical skills. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm emphasizing it in now because that's what runs the world. Mm-hmm. Practical, like I need to get those practical skills and all that. Like we were discussing earlier about, you know, OSINT and Nomad OSINT that we're yeah. they are teaching us these practical skills. I think that's where I was like, you know, when I looked at it, I'm like. I like this. This this would really make sense to me. And then I had to apply for that. I think 
my while I'm having a pressure to perform academically, I think I'm even more pressured to get practical skills. That's mm. where my focus is for now. Like because that's what makes you employable, and that's what makes like I was telling you about like R and oh, I'm just like <laughs> all right, I don't know it. Okay, I cannot lie about it. So like you need you need skills outside the classroom, honestly. Uh, outside like you know the thing about insist the word that drew me about insist is the fact that i would get practical skills outside theory because i think that was what was disgusting me about my policy and strategic studies like in theory i we've talked about policy you know policy development and all that and strategy strategy planning but it was just so theoretical to me and it didn't just seem so practical so when i read like their front page um in 215 i was like you know i want this i want to be in an environment that i am not just learning according to robert our jevnik that this yeah. is this like you're showing me how to actually do it you're showing me how to make it practicable like in as much as i have learned about policy development and all that i have never actually written a policy brief but then i studied policy and strategic study yeah. and like i was like Sometimes just after you, after you, when I'm in that class, I'm like, did I actually learn anything in school? Like, did I learn <laughs> yeah, anything so in school? I think but, those are part of the things that attracted me to IMSI, you know, yeah. being able to write policy briefs and now learning these skills now through IMSI, which mm-hmm. is offered by Nomad. I'm like, this is mad. Like, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 